Hi everyone, David here from DavidDoingAudio.com and in this video, I wanted to do something a little bit different than what we normally do. We're gonna be having a look at a sample library called Quarterone Guitar Reveries by Valiant Samples. Now, I probably butchered that name, but this is a sample library and it's really great for ambient guitar sounds or even any cinematic guitar sounds. So what I thought we would do in this video is I created a little track, so we'll have a listen to the track and then go into how I use the sample library in the track and then actually have a look at the library, what it can do and go through some of the presets because it can do a lot of uh, really cool stuff. So anyways, without further ado, let's just jump into the project and have a listen. All right, so we're gonna do this from the beginning here. It's about two minutes long, so here we go. All right, so that is the track. So I went for something uh, cinematic, something orchestral, and uh, maybe even epic, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but there you have it. So um, yeah, so what I thought we'd do for this video is first I'll just go through each of the patches in, in this track, see how I use it, see what they sound like, and then actually look at the plugin itself, see the presets and all the sounds that it can do, because it can do a lot more than what I just did in this track, but I wanted to show it in context um, so you guys can see what it, it does. All right, so let's get into this here. All right, so the first track here that I had is for the opening. So the opening here, if we just listen to this guitar sounds here, you just have this really bass uh, pad sound and then you also have this pulsing uh, guitar sound down here so uh, I think those are the two patches that I use for that or three patches so let's go through each of these so let's start with this top one up here this is what I call the guitar bass here it sounds like this And what you'll see here that um, it's doing is I'm I'm playing with the tremolo so that it feels like it's pulsing um, as it plays. And you can see it grow here. So the tremolo grows with the sound. So you can hear it just tr tremoloing. I guess it just adds movement, so that, that's that's why that's there. Let's move on to the next one here. This is the one that really provides the ambience for the opening scene here. And that's this one. And then the one that's really doing the movement is this one down here. So this one is, so this is an empty one. This one I just created my own patch here. 
and I used uh, muted guitars, uh, muted shorts, and some harmonic feedback, and this is what it sounds like. And you'll see here I'm playing with the um, the cutoff, so it's like really low, and then kind of grows as as the introduction opens up. So that's that one. And so if we put these together. So it's providing two things. One, it's providing the ambience. Uh, this bass drone and then also the rhythm the pulse to get it going and this is being accompanied here down here with just a uh, strike a percussion loop I have to play it in time So that's the opening here. So you got your bass guitar. And I'm just playing like really low, like you can see this E0. So you get this really low pad. And you'll see I also added portal up here, which is what's adding this huge tail to the sound here. So if I turn this off, this is the actual sound. But then with this on. It just turned it into like this ambient sound. So that's why I put that in there. All right, let's look at the next section here. So that's the introduction. And then I had this middle orchestral section. And then this, the guitars here are basically just providing the pulse and the rhythm to the track. So let's listen to that. And this is just the preset here. And then just plucks kind of. So muted guitar samples. And then same thing down here. And then I had another one up here. This is a different guitar up here. This one here. So if I take off the effects though, it'll be a bit different because I did add distortion on there. So like just a really clean guitar sound. So for someone like me, who's like a, a piano player, this is just a really, this guitar, uh, library is just really nice because it's I feel like it's made for like uh, piano players because there's some guitar libraries where they're like you have to do like the right fingering and the right notes combinations to get the right sounds uh, but this one is just really nice because you're just getting the guitar sounds the guitar notes uh, on the piano roll like this so it just sounds good so if we keep going with these This one is this one is pretty cool. This was, I think this is a pad, and it's actually called Trinity Knot. We're breaking up, so I'm going to rename this like that. So let's have a listen to this one and what I did here. So it sounds really nice. Um, there's a few things that are happening here. Again, I have portal on here. So if I take this off, you won't get this kind of this tail and these all these pitches playing. 
And again, this is this is doubling the melody here. But with Portal, then it adds this tail to the sound and just this interest because you have all these tones and sounds playing. So it's really, really nice sound there. Okay. So I think that's it for this middle section with the guitars. And then I had this really ambient section, which I find is my favorite part right here. So let's listen to this. All right, so the main sound that we're hearing, I think, is this one here. It's just huge pad sound. As you can see, I'm just playing big open chords here. And then I accompanied that with this guitar sound out here. Let's, let's listen to this together. Take off this violin. All right, here we go. This one here. So this is the guitar that's, it's kind of doing this dreamy like pattern. And you'll see here, it's like really loose. Like I didn't, I didn't at all quantize this. I, I really wanted it to be loose. Just by itself. All right, so that's all guitars. So up here I have the main melody, and this is the same guitar as I had it in the opening, so I wanted to kind of connect those two together, so that's why I have this here. So if you listen. So I think those are the only guitars and everything else is kind of accompaniment. So here you'll see I have tremolo strings to accompany this, uh, like the main chords here. And pianos for the melody. And I just added vocals. Right, so this this really lush ambient um, texture, and it's all coming just mainly from these guitar sounds, and then everything else is just kind of layering it to support it. So, yeah, that's my favorite part. All right, <laughs> let's keep it going here. I think the end is just similar to the uh, orchestral section here in the middle, so I just kind of bring it back. I feel like that last guitar part is really loud. <laughs> Uh, 
that's pretty much it for these guitar tracks. So you can see here, I'm using it as a drone here uh, in the opening to add tension. Uh, again, same thing with the pulse down here to add tension and movement. And then um, in this middle section, it's all about just the pulse and the, the rhythm. And it's kind of just sitting like right below the orchestra so that you can, you can still hear it and you still feel the rhythm, but the orchestra is really what's getting the most attention here. All right, so now that we've actually gone through everything, why don't we actually open up a patch and play through it and see what it can do. And uh, I should start off by saying that uh, for this track, obviously I used like my own reverbs and stuff. So I added extra reverb on top of uh, the guitar reverb. So you'll see it's going to, way down over here, um, this reverb here. So it's going through this symphony hall, this large, uh, rich classic hall by Symphony 3D. But I'm going to remove everything. So why don't I actually, I'm going to remove all of these. Okay, I'm going to remove it from this track so that we don't actually get any reverb and we just hear the plugin on its own. Okay, so let's hear it. So this is... Um, You'll see when you open up the instrument, you have three sections. You have your guitars, your pads, and your keys. And then you have an empty where you can create your own patch, uh, which I kind of showed up here, but we'll go deeper into that later here. All right, so um, I'll just start off here with the guitars. I loaded the simple and clean, and here we go. So it's a pretty small patch, 228 megabytes. That's pretty nice, and let's have a listen. <laughs> So a really nice sound, um, and like you'll see that for all of these presets, they're super nice. Let's let's have a listen to another one here. Let's do yeah, this one was cool. Let's try this one. through a few more here. And of course, when you see MW, you, that means mod wheel. So you'll, you know, you'll be able to adjust this with the mod wheel. So let's play something.
So each of them have have like their own cool, unique character, and they all sound really good. It just really depends like what you're looking for. With I mean, if you're looking for anything with guitar, this 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 probably has it. <laughs> That's really cool. Okay, let's go through one more and then uh, go on to the next section. So hopefully you get an idea of different kinds of sounds. Obviously, I can't really go through all of them because we won't have, I don't want to make this video too long. I mean, I guess I could go through all of them, but like there's just so many. There's 50, I think, for each category. So just sounds really, really good. Okay, let's try some of the pads. Try some of these green pads. Let's do one more.
All right, so again, pads, a lot of different characters, a lot of different sounds you can get out of them. Really nice. All right, let's try some of the keys here. All right, so hopefully this gives you an idea of the kinds of sounds you can you get as soon as you get this instrument. Uh, what I thought we'd do now is just open up a an empty uh, instance and just see uh, how we can tweak it uh, for our own. So 
let's have a look at how this works. So basically you are taking two samples. So you have sample A, sample B, and then you can choose between uh, different samples that it comes with here. And they're both the same, obviously on both sides. So let's say we wanted something like mutes on A and then maybe we want longs on B. Let's have a listen to that. And then obviously you already have some effects on here. So I'm just gonna turn some of these off. Right, so just some nice clean guitar sound samples here, so. So, uh, yeah, so now, we, now that we've chosen our samples, obviously we can pan right or left if we want. Just makes a really wide sound. Um, it'd be nice if you could double click this to get it back into the center. So let's leave it like that. And of course you have your, your volume and then ADSR underneath. So I'm just gonna raise the attack a bit of the sustain here. Okay, so these are your basic samples. And now you have two other sounds here. One is your pedal. So whenever you play on a pedal, so you can't see it right now, but I have a pedal under my, my keyboard. So if I play a note and I just click on the pedal, like you can hear the guitar strings, like the, like the player's sliding or something like that. And of course you can turn it down if you don't want any. So now when I do it, there's nothing. And then put it all the way up. So let's leave it there like that. And then the release is the release sound whenever you let go of a note. So if we put it up. Done. It's just a really clean release. So. Something like that is good. All right, next down here, we have the actual sample itself. So this is the start time. So you can start it at different different places. So if, just listen to this one. Right, so if you go a bit more in, you won't get the attack of the sound. Though I wonder if this is actually the the waveform of the sample, if it's just like a like a uh, an art just in place of it, because it's kind of confusing. Yeah, it doesn't look like it changes based on the samples, because it's kind of confusing. Like you might think like, oh, this is the start of the sample, like there's no sound here, and then when as I move in to where the waveform is a bit louder, then I get I get my sound. But that's not actually how it works. So you have to do it by ear, not by sight, because this is not an accurate representation, unfortunately. So and there you go. So this is your basic kind of setup. And then down here, you have your effects for your sound. So here I have my, uh, this is, what is this? Delay and reverb. So this is your wet dry knob for delay and reverb. So let's have a listen. So you don't have to go in here and actually turn it off. You can just go here. And I should say all these are uh, MIDI signable. So if you have a MIDI keyboard and you have a CC, I can just go here, learn. I can just go like that. There you go. Now it's assigned to my mod wheel. Next here we have a cutoff. So I already kind of showed you guys that earlier when I was saying uh, how I used it for the bass up here, I was using the cutoff and I was using exactly this. So if you look here, I already have this assigned to, I think CC 11, yep. So there you go. Here we have a saturation amount. So it's that if you want more or less saturation, you can use that there. 
And here you have your stereo, so if you want it really wide, sounds really wide, and then it doesn't sound like it's coming out at the center at all, or you can just really make it really mono. It's like right in front of you. And then down here you have your tremolo, so let's have to that. And this is just your wet dry, so down you have nothing. So let's actually go into the effects tab now, and you'll see a few things here. So you'll have your A, B, so for each um, effect here, you have your A, B, and this is for samples A and samples B. So you can uh, affect them individually. So let's say you have a, on sample A, you want to cut out all the lows, and you want to maybe boost the high mids or, and the mids, something like that. You can do that just for the B sample, and then for A, um, you can leave it as is, right? So, and you can do that for each one. So lo-fi, same thing, if you turn that on. Let's turn on B here, add the volume down. And yeah. There you go. So you can affect it differently based on the effect here. Same thing with the amp, filter, tremolo, delay. So your basic uh, effects here. And then he, here you have your global effects. So these three are global. You can see you don't have AB. So it applies to everything. So you have your saturate, your stereo, and your reverb. And one thing I wonder is if, um, yeah, so if, if you do like a lot of uh, stereo, I wonder if it actually affects it here, which I think it does. So if I bring it all the way down, yeah, see, it affects, it's the same thing as here. So this is the same thing as these three here. So you have your saturate, your stereo, and reverb, which is your saturate here. This is your saturate, stereo, and then your reverb here. So it's these three knobs are, are the same as these three here. So there you go. Um, the only thing that you would change is the reverb, obviously, because you can, you can change the size and stuff like that. Okay, so this is a basic like overview of, of the library itself. Let's create another patch here. So we did one. Let's go through some of the other samples so we see what it comes with here. So I did a start from scratch here from an empty slot. Let's do a granular and granular mod guitar pad like that. Let's go through all of these actually. Why don't we do go through all of them so we see what they sound like?
All right, so those are all the sounds in this library. So hopefully this gives you a complete idea of what it sounds like, what it can do, um, yeah, and the different sounds you can get out of it. So obviously not just, um, you know, some cinematic stuff. You can also use it, uh, you know, if you take off some of the effects, you can use it as a really nice, clean guitar sound. Super easy to use, just like that. Right, and just so many presets. So. Um, one of the things that I would have liked to see um, from the sample library is have like a, a, a preset manager, like a preset uh, where you can like tag different sounds, kind of like you can do with uh, Thrill. So if I pull this up, so for Thrill, if you want to, if you want to like a Lotus, uh, a different sample, like they have this whole presets category where it's all done by tag. So like if I choose like orchestral and I want strings and low, like I understand like this library here has a lot more sounds than um, the guitar does, than the quarter on guitar libraries, reveries, sorry. But um, yeah, like that. So if I know I want some, like a brass bright sound, like I know I can go into here if I want a string sound or something like that. But I think that even for this library here, it'd be nice to have that because even if I have, let's say, like when I was writing music and I was composing, um, like I was trying to find something that was, uh, that had a certain sound quality or a certain characteristic or whatever. Um, but because I had to go and look through like, <clears throat> like it's nice that they, they categorize them by like guitar pads and keys. Uh, I mean, you get your, your basic ideas here, but then even then, like I have to go through like 50 of them just to try to figure out what the right one is. And like, like, yeah, sure, the names are there, but because they're not tagged or anything like that, I don't actually know what they're going to sound like until I actually load it, play it, and then realize it's not the right one. So in terms of workflow, it's not the best workflow to have it this way. It'd be really nice to have this kind of uh, uh, manager, especially when you have, you know, 150 presets. Um, so, yeah, that'd be something that'd be really nice, especially if you start, like, adding your own presets and saving your own stuff. It'd be nice to be able to look back and, and see what you created, how you created it, and then tag it so that it, you know exactly what you're looking for when you're looking for it. So, um, yeah, I think, but apart from that, like, you're, you're really getting some really nice sounds, really awesome guitar sounds, and, um, yeah. So I think that's it for this video. I think we'll end it off. I'll just play the track one last time so you guys can have a listen to the guitars in the track again now that you've kind of know what the guitars are, what they're going to sound like. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll leave a link to the samples in the library, uh, to the, um, a link to the sample library below <laughs> in the description. So if you guys are interested, make sure to check it out by Valiant Samples. And I'm just going to say a big thank you to them because they uh, reached out to me and asked me if I would like to uh, review it. And they did give it to me for free, but they did not uh, pay me or anything like that. And they did not <laughs> coerce me or make me say anything. Like, this is completely my review. They let me do whatever I wanted, which was really great. They let me uh, say what I wanted, do how, how, like whatever music track I wanted and whatever kind of review I wanted. So um, they were really gracious about that. So um, yeah, this is all entirely my opinions, my uh, my uh, thoughts and, and experience with this library. So uh, yeah, if you guys are interested, make sure to check the link in the description below. I think that's it for now. I'll play the track and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.